I'm Roy Potter, a former U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel. Welcome to the Potter Expositor. Hi ladies and gentlemen, today is June 29th, 2017. And I wasn't going to talk about this, but because it's in the news, it's it's pretty obvious. But I wanted to bring up the situation with the Lavoie Finicum shooting in Oregon uh, back uh, a year ago. And the fact that at the time when this whole situation happened, the the, the manner of the roadblock, uh, the fact that they were stopping these guys from going to the John D. May um, area to give a talk to many many people including who he would they were invited there by the county sheriff as a matter of fact in the neighboring county to give a talk about this obviously this whole thing was designed to contain uh, the information that these people were expounding upon I'm talking about the Bundys and the Finnicums uh, uh, about the whole land rights issue and the Eloidal lands and all of that and I don't want to spend time getting into that here the point is is that it was starting to catch on that this entire thing was designed by the federal government, by the BLM, uh, and then supported by the FBI and the DOJ uh, to take the land from these people up there and to allow that land to be plundered by people like Hillary Clinton and the Uranium One Deal, uh, Harry Reid, people like that. So really, they, the, the FBI and the DOJ, as we pointed out for a long time, are designed to protect uh, the elites, the political elites in particular, from prosecution for their crimes and then to look like the, that they're doing, the FBI and the DOJ are out there doing their job, they go after these little people. Granted, I, I, and I think people that watch me understand this, that I consider the occupation, especially the armed occupation by uh, the Bundys, etc., at the Malheur Refuge to be wrong. I mean, going on the offensive in that regard was, was absolutely wrong. The demonstration prior to that, the protest demonstration, fine. And, you know, they could have opened an office there or something uh, in town to, to, to work from, but the armed uh, occupation was just a really bad idea, and I don't know who actually came up with that idea, if it was something that the FBI manufactured. In other words, they, they, they caused it to happen, or people in the BLM or the feds. I, I just don't know. It could have just been a bad idea by Ammon himself. And I've heard all kinds of things. Regardless, it was a bad decision, and I'm sticking by that, much to the dismay of those who think otherwise. But... I'm saying that from not just a law enforcement perspective, but from a constitutional and from a perfect law of liberty perspective, because the people in Oregon had already picked what side they wanted to be on in this situation anyway. But the important thing is, is that the idea of the land rights issue in the West was catching on. And, and that convoy from, of the Bundys and, and, and Lavoie and all those people were going to talk to this rather large group in John D. May um, County. And they just couldn't allow that. Clinton and, and Obama and, and all those people could not allow more information about this land grab by the feds and especially by political elites to, to be any more exposed. The uranium deal was already going on, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I, I first want to give my condolences again to the Finnegan family because that was an entirely unnecessary event that occurred. The police and the FBI did not have to use deadly force in that situation. Uh, I know that as a police officer, and I also understand, I don't know this for sure, but I also understand that the roadblock itself violated Oregon law. But regardless of the situation, uh, it was designed to take out the most articulate and what the federal government, what Clinton and those people considered to be the most dangerous person in that group, and that was Finnicum, who had uh, the, the really the best delivery and the best understanding of the situation. And of course, his ranch in Arizona, they had been trying to get for some time. But what came out, of course, of this was that, oh, lo and behold, the same group that killed Mickey, uh, Wick, uh, sorry, Vicki Weaver and uh, was at Waco and has done a lot of other stuff, the Fe Federal Bureau of Investigations, really ill-named hostage rescue team. Frankly, you know, I was going to do a search to find out if this hostage rescue team had ever been used to rescue hostages. 
I don't think so. At least nothing of any import, nothing that they've talked about. But we've certainly seen them involved in these assassinations, and that's really what they are. Mass assassination at, at Waco. But regardless, uh, what I want to say here is this. While I do not trust anyone on the hostage rescue team, and I trust very few people at the upper echelons of the FBI, uh, it looks to me, I mean, we're, we're into this 18 months after the incident occurred. And true, the, the, the county sheriff there was investigating all this because there were casings on the ground that were unexplained initially, and then those disappeared. And then, of course, the holes in Finnicum's car from angles that shouldn't have occurred from ground fire, the immediate fire when he was shot. Uh, and, th and then there were some other anomalies, like the 9mm handgun that I still maintain was a throwaway. I don't know who put it there, uh, or if there actually, in fact, ever really was one. I don't know. Uh, but if that was investigated properly, then all of that should have come out. But remember, there was a political motivation here, and it was protected under the auspices of the all-encompassing, ridiculous, corrupt national security, I'm certain. Actually, to protect Clinton at this, and the Clinton Foundation, and Uranium One, and all that, the Russia deal, and all that. But the point is, is that now they're indicting one of these hostage rescue team snipers uh, for obstruction of justice, for telling a different story, supposedly, than what really occurred. And I've been in law enforcement a long time, ladies and gentlemen. i got to tell you, I smell something really bad here. Uh, it seems to me that this is being brought out at a time. That, that investigation will not have taken 18 months, that portion of it. Something's happening here where the FBI is, is actually making this guy a scapegoat. Whether or not he's uh, going along with that, I don't know. But I'm just going to tell you, that's what it looks like to me. Uh, so, uh, what, what are they trying to do? Show that the FBI really does go after its own when they do something wrong? Well, then why didn't they actually go after Lon Horiuchi instead of protecting him when he shot uh, Vicki Weaver and, and also what happened at Waco? Of course, that's been swept under the rug by uh, Orrin Hatch. Uh, so what I'm saying here is, is that when, when the elites in the FBI, when, when the top brass is in trouble, they're trying to, to, again, just like the war in Syria, you know, or, or whatever, they try to shift the focus onto something else. And my gut feeling tells me that this is a move to, to, to actually protect somebody else and to put this uh, FBI agent on the HRT up as a sacrificial lamb. I don't know all the details in between, but that's obviously what's happening here. Will there be others? Nah. I'm sure that he was not the only one that fired. Uh, I wouldn't think so. And that was a political hit team out there at that time. That's what the HRT was sent out there to do, was to take these guys out. I think they probably would have gotten Bundy and them, too, if the events hadn't transpired the way they did. And we probably would have found a lot of other throwaway weapons on the ground. And that young girl who was in Finnegan's car probably wouldn't be alive today. So something happened on the ground that prevented them from using the story the way they really wanted to. Maybe it was their own drone that caught the information. Uh, I don't know. But at any rate, I smell a rat there, and I wanted to bring that up. And I wanted, again, to give my condolences to the Finnegan family. Uh, let's watch this. There's too much corruption in these agencies. Trump really needs to clean them out. Anybody who's against the Constitution, uh, the Arpaio thing should be reversed by the DOJ as well as the Bundy situation in Nevada. I realize there were some people that, that didn't just carry weapons as a Second Amendment pro protest at Bundy Ranch, but there were some that actually did offer, and, and, and the judge is trying to say that merely having a weapon there is, is brandishment. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe that. It's never been the case. If that's the case, every police officer in the world is brandishing a weapon. So that's, I don't believe that. That's bad. But the people that actually did, you know, appear to be um, aggressively pointing their weapons, uh, they need to be in trouble. But that goes on both sides, the Federals and, and the, the people on the other side, the, the civilians. So there's a lot of, a lot of things at play here. Uh, I also wanted to bring up something else here that's really uh, been on my mind lately. I tw tweeted this out a little while ago, and that is that no one that I'm aware of has heard from journalist Ben Swan 
for a long time after his Pizzagate review. And again, he didn't point, that was an investigative piece that he did, if you've watched that. And he just said, look, these, these symbols are the same kind that the FBI identifies in these situations for pedophilia and human trafficking. Uh, I'm not saying it was this pizza parlor, but there's some other events going on. I think it's the fact, in my own mind, that he didn't focus necessarily just on the pizza place in D.C., that he said that basically there's some hanky-panky going on here and there are a lot of people linked to it. And I think it was because he took that approach that they came down on him. But again, this is something that we don't know. No one's heard that I'm aware of from journalist Ben Swan since he was taken off the air and took down his Twitter account and his uh, YouTube and his website. So the purpose of this video really, other than the things I've already said, is to ask anybody out there if they have heard from or any information concerning journalist Ben Swan. And if, if Ben, if you hear this, uh, maybe you're under some gag thing, I don't know. Uh, hopefully you, you're, you're breathing, uh, you're an excellent journalist, you put yourself on the line on more than one occasion, and the world needs more like you. We don't need to lose you. So. Please get this information out. I know I don't have a large audience. That's not my purpose. It never has been. It's to take the, my own karma off of me because I served this, this corrupt federal government on and off for 28 years and in other ways. And so, you know, that's the reason why I've spoken out. I've told people that from the very beginning. I'm not looking for followers. I'm not looking for big audiences. I don't advertise on my channel. I'm not, I don't use it for money because the truth should not be traded for money. I'm not, again, I'm not doubting those who have to run an operation, you know, and have to have, to have the pay coming in. I understand that. I'm not de denigrating that whatsoever. I'm just telling you what my reasons are. Down in the description box below, I've placed two links. The first is, of course, the situation where the, the FBI agents being investigated for obstruction of justice in the Finicum shooting. Um, and then I've also got, again, the information on the McKay being under investigation. That's a key thing. Uh, hopefully, you know, as, as these investigations broaden, uh, of course, they're going to find out that Trump and his team are really innocent of all these asinine charges as we know now. But Mueller's not going to want to go after the Clintons and the and the Comeys and the Lynches and all those that support them down throughout the organizations, these corrupt organizations. But uh, if it's run right, uh, uh, they can either hold Mueller's feet to the fire of the people that are uh, that are really innocent and then hold him to the fire or get rid of him altogether and, and handle this in an entirely different way. Uh, a real quick call. Uh, Jerome Corsi has made it, and some others, David Knight, I think, has said it. Those, those cases that have been brought against good people by the Obama administration, the corrupt DOJ, etc., like Arpaio, like the Bundys, like the Hammonds, etc., and there, there are more than that, uh, on behalf of the EPA, the BLM, etc., etc., those cases need to be motioned for dismissal. And... They can do that. They absolutely can do it. It wouldn't be political. Knowing the circumstances, they can justify it. There might be another tactical reason that they're approaching it from the way that they are. Uh, I don't know. You know, I'm giving, as, as usual, I'm giving Trump in a session some benefit of the doubt. Uh, I do have my questions, as I always do, but I think that, and I'm not an attorney, but I am, have been a law enforcement officer, and I know they can go for a motion of dismissal. I know they can, at least for the people that, if they want to question the whole situation about, you know, pointing firearms, that's one thing. Let's address that. But uh, as far as the demonstration and the sheriff there, uh, especially in the Bundy case, already saying the BLM was leaving and the cattle was, was uh, going to be released, those people didn't go up there merely to confront the BLM. They were right, They were hoping that that the cattle were going to be released is my understanding and that as they approached as the Michael Lynch uh, uh, video shows from Fox News the BLM was already threatening to shoot people who were approaching that area and that wasn't even federal land okay enough for now I just wanted to cover those things real quick uh, again I, I am cutting back even the last few days it looks like I, I haven't been I actually am so uh, you know, we'll see how things go. Uh, I will stay active on Twitter. Uh, the way I am managing that for myself, it's turned out to be a very good uh, piece of, of, uh, of a tool. So, okay, out here for now.